Many people who need surgery and procedures also take a blood thinner. Today, I'm going to talk about blood thinners and surgery and procedures. When it comes to blood thinners and surgery, there are a few questions that need to be answered. Can the procedure be done with the blood thinner on board? If I have to stop the blood thinner, when do I need to stop it? After surgery, when can I start the blood thinner again? And finally, there's a reason I'm taking the blood thinner. How will I be protected during the procedure and after? Let's start with the first question. Do I even need to stop the blood thinner before this procedure? The answer is not as easy as it may seem. You can imagine that not all procedures are the same. Cleaning your teeth is not the same as liver surgery or something like that. The lower risk procedures can probably be done with a blood thinner on board, but the high risk procedures probably cannot. Not only that, the location of surgery matters. Brain surgery or spine surgery are very risky. Any small bleed can be hazardous. Other procedures may not be as risky. So knowing whether you need to stop the blood thinner before the procedure needs to take into account the risk of bleeding during the procedure and how risky the procedure is. In the end, there are too many procedures to kind of go over the whole list right now. The only person who will truly know if they can do the procedure on the blood thinner is the person performing the procedure. So in order to answer the question of whether you need to stop your blood thinner before any procedure or surgery, you have to reach out to the people doing the procedure and you'll have to ask them. Let's assume you have to stop the blood thinner before the procedure. When should you do that? That should take into account two factors. The first is you, the patient. Why are you taking the blood thinner? How important is it for you to be on the blood thinner at all times? How risky will it be for you to stop the blood thinner for a day or two or three prior to the procedure? Let me give you an example. A person who is taking a blood thinner because a small blood clot that happened many years ago obviously needs to continue the blood thinner sometimes, but the risk may not be as high as somebody else who has a, an antibody that causes clotting or a specific kind of heart valve that may get stuck without the blood thinner on board. It's not the same thing. So one patient is lower risk than the other patient and we need to take that into account. On the other side is the surgery. Some surgical procedures are higher risk for bleeding and other surgical procedures are low risk for bleeding. Again, if the procedure is very high risk for bleeding, like procedures on the spine, for example, we will need to be sure that there's no blood thinner in our system at all. On the other hand, some procedures can be done safely even without that certainty. So once you take into account how risky it is for you, the patient, to be off of the blood thinner and how risky the procedure is, you can calculate when the blood thinner needs to be stopped. The next thing to take into account is the type of blood thinner you're taking. Each blood thinner takes a different amount of time to get out of our bodies. So with some blood thinners, it's enough to stop for a couple of days, while with others, you'll have to stop for five days. The classic example of the five-day stop is going to be Coumadin or Warfarin. And the classic example of medications you can stop two or three days before the procedure are medications such as Apixaban, also known as Eliquis, and Rivaroxaban, also known as Aralto. You may ask yourself, what about medications like aspirin or Plavix, Clopidogrel, Ticagrelor, Brilenta, medications like this? When do I need to stop them before surgery? You may be surprised to learn that these medications, while thinning your blood, work at a totally different mechanism than the other blood thinners I mentioned. Each one of those also has a different purpose and a different time to get out of your body if you need them out of your system. Oftentimes, these medications will be prescribed by your cardiologist, your neurologist, or sometimes your family physician. You should understand why you're taking them and again, take into account the risk of being off of these medications for a few days and the risk of being on them for the purpose of surgery. Now we need to ask ourselves, when can we start the blood thinner after the surgical procedure is over? Usually we can start a day or two after a procedure, but the only person who will really know is going to be the surgeon, the person who performed the procedure. They will take into account how the procedure went if they are confident that there is no risk for bleeding, and they will take into account the sort of average risk associated with that procedure. For example, oftentimes people who have had brain surgery cannot receive a blood thinner for a few weeks even after the procedure, even if everything is okay. 
other people who have had a minor superficial procedure may be able to start their blood thinner the day after surgery. The last question we need to answer is, how should you be protected during surgery and around surgery if you're off of, a, of the blood thinner? Well, first of all, oftentimes the risk you're taking is not going to be huge because the break, the window off of the blood thinner is going to be only a few days. And oftentimes that's a reasonable risk to take for a procedure that needs to happen. However, in some instances, the risk is higher. A typical example is if you just had a blood clot in your lungs or in your legs, a PE or DVT. If you just had that clot and you're, you're taking time off of the blood thinner, there's a really substantial risk of more clots happening. In that kind of instance, you may need something called an IVC filter. You may wanna check out a different video we made on that. And another solution or a combination of a solution may be something called intermittent compression devices, which basically means pumps on your legs that kind of inflate and deflate to make sure blood is flowing when you're sort of laying there having the procedure. In other instances, such as when you have a heart valve and you really need uh, the blood thinner on board, you may need to come into the hospital and receive a blood thinner through the vein so you'll be able to receive it all the way up to surgery and so the break off of the blood, th of the blood thinner is going to be minimal. In summary, when we think about blood thinners and surgery and procedures, we need to think about why do I need the blood thinner? How risky is it for me to be off of the blood thinner? How risky is it to have the procedure with the blood thinner on board? And how can I be protected when I'm off of the blood thinner having my procedure? As always, please share and like this video. I hope you subscribe to our channel and I'll see you next time.